Hi, and welcome to your 21st iOS programming tutorial. And today, I'm going to be showing you how to implement local push notifications within your iOS application. A push notification is one of the notifications that might appear on your device when you receive something like an email or a text message, or you might have a certain game that sends you a notification every week or so saying, come and play the game. And that's what we'll be doing today. We'll have an application and five seconds after the user closes the application, the device will receive a banner notification at the top of the device. One of the notifications that appears in the top of the device, whatever application they are in, and when clicked on it will take the user back to the application. I'll then also show you how you could uh, set it to the notification to appear on a certain date, rather than just after a certain interval of time. For example, you might have a Christmas application and you want a Merry Christmas notification to appear on Christmas Day. Anyway, this is what we'll be creating. Once the user open the application, if they then close the application and wait 5 seconds, a push notification will appear on their device. It doesn't matter whether they're already in another application or not. Here's the notification, and if I click on it, it opens uh, my application. So, let's get started and create this application in Xcode. So, open up Xcode and create a new project. I'll just create a single view application and call it notification, but again that's all up to you. The organization name, company identifier and devices and class prefix are also up to you. Click next and then click create. For this tutorial we're actually not going to do anything in main.storyboard or view controller. It's all done in the app delegate. If you don't know what the app delegate is, I have done another tutorial on it, but you don't really need to know. I'll briefly explain it now. The app delegate pretty much uh, talks to the device, so the iPhone or iPad, and communicates with the device about your application. It's the delegate between your application and the iOS device. So if you go into your appdelegate.m, you'll see there are already there is already a lot of code in here set up for you. There's a few main methods. There's application did finish launching with options, which is when your application initially launches. Application will resign active, which is when uh, the application is disrupted due to th something like a phone call, a text message, uh, the user might open up Control Center or something, and that's very similar to application to enter background. If you've got background mode set up, as it says here, the app will call application will terminate, which is down here, instead of this. But it's saying that you probably don't have background mode set up in your application, don't worry about doing that. If you do have back uh, uh, background mode set up in your application, or when you follow this tutorial, uh, you get errors for some reason, try moving the code into application will terminate. I'll show you that at the end. Then there's the application will enter foreground method, which is when the application opens again, and the simulator did become active. We'll be putting our code in did enter background, and once the application enters background, this is all called everything that we put inside these two curly brackets. Inside here, we'll uh, create a date, which will be five seconds after the current time, and after th that five seconds, the application will send a notification. So let's get started. I'll type out all the code and just follow along, and then I'll explain it all at the end. So type ns date asterisk, and we'll call this alarm time equals open two square brackets ns date, uh, and then just type date, and that's the current date. Then type date by adding time interval, and type five point zero. Then add a se uh, closing curly bracket and a semicolon. Then type UI application and asterisk app equals UI application shared application. Close the square bracket and add a semicolon. Then type UI local notification and we'll just call this notify alarm equals two square brackets UI local notification alloc and then close that first square bracket and then type in it, close the second square bracket and add a semicolon. Then type if notify alarm, and then inside the statements bubble, type notify alarm dot fire date equals, and then we'll set this to be our date, which is alarm time. Then type notify alarm dot time zone equals ns time zone current or oh, default time zone. Close the square bracket and add a semicolon. Then we've got notify alarm dot repeat interval equals zero. Notify alarm dot uh, sound name equals, and then we can do at talking mark talking mark and then close square brackets. Then notify alarm dot 
alert body equals at talking mark talking mark semicolon and then no uh, and then we can do your square bracket app schedule local notification notify alarm and then add a semicolon that's all you really need to do now there's a few other things that we should do to make sure that we don't get any errors or that small bugs don't occur firstly we need to add some code to application will enter foreground what this will do is what we need to do is if the user quits the application then after five seconds this notification is meant to run but if within like three seconds they then return to the application then we don't want them while they're in the application to get a notification from the application saying come and open the application if that made any sense essentially what we need to do is as soon as the application is open we want to cancel the notification it doesn't matter if you want to set your notification to open on a certain date as soon as they then close the application after opening it that will then happen again it's just if we have an interval say we wanted the notification to appear every five seconds and then the user opens the application we don't want it to appear while they're in the application so you just type inside application will enter foreground UI application asterisk and we'll just call it app again equals UI application shared application then type NS array asterisk old notif uh, notifications equals app scheduled local notifications and then add a square bracket and then type if square bracket old notifications are uh, count is more than zero so the more than symbol and then zero app cancel all local notifications add a semicolon so then we that's all the code we need to do for now but we do need to set up the text for the alert to show so inside notify alarm dot alert body let's enter some text for the notification to show i'll just make mine this is a push notification now inside sound name if you want your uh, uh, notification alarm to have a particular sound for example you might have an animal application and you might want it to play a frog sound or something then that's where you put the name of this so let's say I had an alert uh, sound I'd just type alert dot wave waves the best file uh, type for the sound name I would also need to import it by going into my files inspector right clicking on my project and clicking add files to notification make sure destination copy group items into destinations group folder would, is selected and then I'd select my sound I don't have a particular sound I want to play so I'll just leave this blank but it does give me the option to add it in later on what the repeat interval does is if we wanted the well let's first look at all the code so what we're doing is we're creating a date which is the date that the uh, notification will run on so the date is going to be the current date which is NS date date and then we'll add five seconds to that so five seconds after the application is closed then we're just creating the application so that, uh, that's pretty much just the application and we could just use application because we're in application did enter background but don't worry about that we don't need to do that then we're creating a lo local notification which is just the lo local notification and if notify alarm which is our local notification uh, that pretty much just means if notify alarm contains something and it should because we initialized and allocated it so if, if this isn't run it means there's an error that's why we're doing this if statement here if there's no error then we're going to set the date f the, for the notification to appear the fire date to be the date that we set up here so the current date plus five seconds we're going to set the time zone just to be the default time zone which is whatever time zone is set up on the user's device the repeat interval we could set to for example two and that will mean every two seconds so it would on the fifth second seventh second ninth second and every two seconds after the fifth second the notification would appear but we don't want it to appear more than once then as mentioned we've got the sound name and then finally the alert body which is the notifications text we can do a whole lot of other things so if you type notify alarm dot and then you can scroll through what type of head comes up with and you'll see all the various things you can set it to be you can see there's fire date and we could try typing alert and we can see we can change the alert image which is uh, as you can see identifies the image use launch image when the user taps or slides the action button or slider essentially that means that uh, your application has a launch image obviously and you could potentially change that launch image just for that notification uh, we could also change the alert action which uh, we can um, that's a bit more complex so I won't explain that now 
And there's a whole lot of other things we can do. We've got our fire date, obviously, and we can set it to have an action specific to it. And there's even more that we can do. And I suggest scrolling through that and experimenting with the various things that you can do. Anyway, finally, we're scheduling the, uh, we're saying app, so our application, schedule a notification, so make a notification appear, and we want that notification to be notify alarm. And we've already, remember, preset the date for it to fire, so we don't need to do that down here. Then, if the user enters the application, we're going to just delete all the current notifications, so that if the user had, uh, if there was about to be a notification sent from the application, we wanted to stop that immediately, so that the user doesn't receive a notification from the app that they're currently in. That doesn't make much sense, after all. Now, let's run our application in the simulator and see if it works. So, go Command R or click the Run button to run your application in the simulator, and let's see if it works. So our application is obviously just going to be a blank screen because we haven't actually set up anything else. Now, once the simulator loads, you can see it is just a blank white screen. Obviously, if you wanted to add things to your application, you can do that in the main.storyboard or the view controller and so on. Back in the simulator, let's quit our application by clicking the home button and wait five seconds and hope that a notification appears. And in about one second, yep, there you go, there's our push notification. If I leave it, it'll end up in Notification Center, and I can obviously do a whole lot of other things. I could, for example, let's run the application again, and then let's quit it again, and the notification will once again appear. And the other thing that I could do, and I'll show you in a moment, is make it appear in the lock screen. And there you go, there's our push notification, and when I click on it, it goes to our application. Now, I've quit the application, go into Hardware Menu and click Lock, which is Command L, and that will lock the device on the simulator. As you can see, it's just open because we've got a push notification. And I can slide to view it, and there we go, we're back in our application. This is a really cool thing that you can do with your notifications. You can change the notification type to be an alert rather than the banner, and the user can obviously do that from the settings menu under, I think it is privacy, and they can go into uh, alerts. You don't have that option though in the simulator to change the notification center settings, so you'd have to run it on a real device to see that in action. So I hope you found this tutorial interesting, and if you've got any questions about general iOS development or push notifications, local push notifications specifically, uh, comment on this video, message us through YouTube, message us through our Facebook page, uh, facebook.com forward slash 99 cents app development, or go to our website and get in touch with us, with us 99 cents app development.com. Be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.